So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I recently got into Twitter and over the weekend I was scrolling through the feed and I came across from Meet Sethi's post on the phantom cost of home ownership. And there's this big debate going on on his page on understanding the real cost benefits of renting versus buying. And in all fairness, I think it's a very fair question given the high interest rates. And I thought it would be interesting to break this down in today's video. And so that way you can do your own cost analysis on whether or not it makes sense for you. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Lizzie Hofer and I'm a residential loan officer in Phoenix, Arizona. I work for Cross Country Mortgage and I created the channel to teach people practical money tips. Now with all things money, all things investment, I think it's really important that you do your own homework. You shouldn't just take my word for gold. You have to do your own research and make sure that one, an investment makes sense for your budget and it makes sense for the long haul. And so because of that, I want you to listen to a variety of different perspectives and also realize that I am biased towards real estate because I feel so passionate about it that I've taken up a career in it and that there are a variety of different ways to invest your money. And so long as you understand your investment and make sense for your buy box, by all means, this is not the only way. So having said that, I think it's also important to disclaim that real estate and real estate data is very localized to your area. And so some of the information that I present in today's video is specifically for Maricopa County, and it might not be relevant to the area that you're living in, but all of the tips that I give you in terms of figuring out your break even should be applicable to any real estate scenario. And so long as you understand how real estate impacts your own budget and how long you plan on keeping a property and what the current state of rate of appreciation is, you should be okay. So one of my favorite things about Twitter is that you will see some of the most influential people say some of the most triggering things and Ramit is no exception. He is always goes after home ownership pretty aggressively. And in my opinion, it's because he lives in a high cost area. And when you live in a high cost area like San Francisco or New York City, the cost of owning a property is so much more expensive than rent. And the point he's trying to make is that it doesn't have to be home ownership where you invest your money, even though it is something that everyone talks about as like one of the first or second steps in a financial journey, that there's other ways to invest your money, especially given the disparity between high cost home ownership and high cost rent. I mean, there, it is a significantly more expensive to own a home in New York City and San Francisco than it would be to rent. And there are other ways to invest your money. And so from that perspective, I think what he says makes so much sense. And I would also say that working in real estate, many people do not anticipate the cost, you know, increases to property taxes, maintenance, repairs. And because of that, when they buy a home, they're even more compressed in their budgets. But having said that, I will say that most people don't live in high cost areas like Rami and many people would benefit from home ownership. And because he wrote a book on how to get rich, he has a lot of mid to lower level income earners following him on steps, you know, similar to what they do with Dave Ramsey and trying to educate them on not buying. I don't think makes the most sense. And the stats would actually back me up here because 70% of the overall wealth in America is made up in home equity and the four savings that you have with paying down your principal balance. Having said all of that, I want to break down what it truly costs to rent versus buy over a, you know, a five year period here in Maricopa County. And then I want to help you guys really decipher whether or not it makes sense for you to buy. So I had to do a little bit of market research here. And so I will tell you that as of June 12th, 2023, the median rent here, which means that there's like half the properties are more expensive than this and half of the properties are less expensive than this in terms of rent was $2,069. And as of today, the median price was $435,000 to buy a house. Now, this does not go into specifics like what type of house or what area. These are just basic numbers. And for this video, I threw in a 7% interest rate for the mortgage with an FHA loan because I think that's probably the most competitive first time home buyer program. And I wanted to pick an interest rate that was on the higher end of the scale. And then I also picked the lowest percentage of appreciation for the Valley. So that way I could give like just an overall conservative figure when I was doing this. 
for starters, a couple things that I think are important to mention about renting versus buying is that renting a home is significantly cheaper in terms of the outlay in cash than buying a home. With renting a house, you pay security deposits, you may pay first and last month's rent. It's generally speaking, you know, most some of that money you will get back in returns, others will get applied towards rent. Essentially, it's like four to six thousand dollars to rent this property versus like a down payment of $15,225 and then $8,700 in closing costs that you would pay in addition to inspection costs and maybe the cost of a home warranty. It's gonna be significantly more expensive upfront, no matter what, to buy a property. Now in this marketplace, it is common to have a seller pay for your home warranty or your closing costs, but typically inspection costs and down payment costs are all on the buyer. Now, if we were just looking at renting and buying over a 12 month period, I think that it's pretty easy to say that renting a home is significantly less cash outlay and you could probably do a lot more with the money because if let's say your property was only appreciating a half a percent, you, we would be talking about an increase in value of $26,100, but you would have to minus from that figure, uh, the $8,700 that you would have paid in uh, closing costs minus the thousand dollars of inspection costs or home warranty costs. And then if you were gonna figure, let's say you had a hundred dollars a month in HOA costs, we're now down in equity like $15,200. The difference in a mortgage payment and the rental payment. Oh, and I should mention that the mortgage payment on the FHA loan, assuming that we have a hundred dollars in homeowner's insurance and $235 and 62 cents in property taxes, including $191.51 in uh, mortgage insurance, we're looking at a house payment of $3,319. And so that's a difference of $1,250.90. So if we were gonna talk about that, right? So that's $15,000 in additional expense on a monthly payment basis. So in year one, you like break even in terms of cost. So there's really no benefit if you're only gonna own a house for one year, you're better off renting. But once you exceed owning a property for two years, we are seeing significant changes in the amount of money that you walk away with. And so I, I wanted to put this table and I will, I'm will i gonna put this up here so that you guys can see it. But year one, again, like I said, it's $26,100. Year two, that property would be worth $461,100. And now assuming that home equity only increases a half a percent, that property would then earn $27,666. And year three, your property would start out at 488,766. The equity increase from that year would be $29,325. Then year four, you'd start out at 549,177, right? Again, an increase of $31,085. And then in year five, you start out with $582,128,000. Again, that equity year five would be $32,950. And we would walk away, right, after the beginning of year six at $617,055. So over that collective five year period, we're talking $182,055, which is really, really significant. And if you think about paying six years worth of, or five years worth of rent, be paying an extra $75,054 in extra rent payments, plus the $87 in closing costs. At this point, if $100 for HOA would be 6,000. And then assuming for changes in property taxes and then maybe repair costs, another, like I did a 1% cost, which I think is kind of aggressive. So assuming you had $31,330 worth of property tax changes and repairs, right? We're talking about, I mean, we're talking about $58,255 of costs. You would still walk away guys with about $60,000 in equity, right? And if you think about how long it takes the average person to save $60,000, I mean, it's extremely difficult. So when you think about $60,000, 
you think about, well, geez, how long would it take me to actually save that? And this doesn't consider guys if there was any increases to rent or this only accounts for a half a percent appreciation and definitely does not account for any of the principal reduction that you would pay when you make your mortgage payments. So the number one question to ask yourself when you're determining whether or not to buy or rent is can I safely afford this within my budget? And safely affording it means that you can still pay down debt and put money aside for savings or investments without having to change anything within your lifestyle. So you would want to account for whatever your new mortgage payment is. And if you can do like pay down debt and continue to save, then you have a green light in terms of your budget. The other thing is you have to consider how long you're planning on staying in the property, right? And so if it's a, you know, five plus year investment, I would say, definitely do this side by side, figure out the appreciation rate for the area, and then look at all the hard costs, like the HOA costs, potential repair costs, maintenance costs, you know, landscaping and bug sprays and all that stuff, things that your landlord would pay. And then I would put them against what it would be to rent and what you would be doing with the money should you not have invested it in a property. Now, the last thing that I will leave you with is that Ramit is super passionate about this because he wants people to know that there are other ways to invest your money. But oftentimes what I have seen as somebody who's dealt with hundreds of people and looked at their budgets and their credit is that people do not save or invest this additional savings. So they'll go into a rental and then they don't have a plan for where their money is going. And so if you are somebody who is overwhelmed with picking out investments and doesn't feel comfortable buying Bitcoin or stocks, putting your money in a rental property or an, a primary residence that you can get the utility of living in and have access to better schools or gyms or recreation centers, pools, right, might make sense and you get the added benefit of enjoying it. So I will tell you that there are a lot of benefits to owning a home and you should only do so if it makes sense for your budget and you have a long-term plan. If you found today's video helpful, guys, I hope you will like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to send this on to a friend or family member who could use this valuable information.